I want to talk about a subject matter that affects conversational dynamics in the cinema industry in such a substantial way. And the reason for that in particular is because this subject matter has so many mixed opinions surrounding it by movie pundits, and that's pirating. For this segment of the post sentencing hearing show, I want to talk about the nuance of pirating because we tend to get too caught up in the low budget ads that the FBI likes to send you on TV, right? Like, under the comedic illusion that their anti piracy campaigns are making a massive difference, if at all. And making any difference at all will be a generous way to, you know, compliment those FBI ads because they make an insubstantial difference. I mean, sure, they're probably going to spook a six-year-old child from pirating Thomas the Tank Engine episodes, you know? Like, other than that, the responses that those anti-piracy ads would typically garner would be more along the lines of, Oh no! I'm so scared! What am I to do? Like, it's more like that. And I would actually go on Pirate Bay to watch movies and all forms of other entertainment. Movies, games, you know, and all the other stuff. Music, like, like that's kind of the reality that we're living in. And before anyone tries to report me to the relevant authorities, Joe Rogan smokes weed, and he has a podcast show up and running on the air for the whole world to see. So, it's not like anyone cares if he pirates something that you weren't going to pay for anyway. Because here's the thing too, if you're never going to buy or rent a movie or watch it in the cinema, well, the creators aren't going to get your money anyway. What difference is piracy going to make in the grand scheme of things? And no, it's not equivalent to snatching a DVD from a shelf in a store. DVD stock is finite. Unlimited files, on the other hand, that are backed up 24-7 on a cloud, are not. That is the distinction here. So don't tell me that by pirating a movie, it's taking it off the shelf. Because I guarantee you that the only reason that robbing a blockbuster store was problematic to begin with for the store owners was because they had to keep replacing the DVDs on the shelf. Whereas the equation for pirating is just money that isn't going to get paid. But it's not reducing stock. But my goal right now is to offer somewhat of a balanced perspective of the advantages and disadvantages of piracy. Because as I've already mentioned in the opening, piracy is packed with a lot of in colossal nuance. The disadvantages of piracy are rather straightforward. It can affect the earnings of an industry, which is really just dependent on the business size. Like, if you pirate a movie from Mickey Mouse, Disney is not going to go bankrupt, so pirating Aladdin is nothing to feel bad about. However, if you pirate something from an independent filmmaker who is trying to get by, piracy is a disservice to them because they need every drop of penny that they could get when consolidating a living in the film industry. So, there's that. There are also advantages to pirating that people often neglect because it's convenient for their argument. Pirated software is cheap and cost-efficient because as long as you're paying for bandwidth, you don't have to deal with the burden of purchasing the movie on top of these extra variable costs and bills for other necessities. It is so easy for us to shame pirates for wanting to just get some sliver of entertainment in their lives. And it makes us forget that if they were in a better financial place, then they would have paid for the content anyway. It's not like they're 
actively seeking to harm artists. You know what actually harms artists? Plagiarism. Okay? You plagiarize an artist's existing work. Then you're actually taking away attention from the artist. But when you're pirating their work, in fact, the more people who pirate movies, the more likely that the product is going to sell to buying consumers. If people didn't pirate season one of The Mandalorian when they premiered, I highly doubt it would have generated the pop cultural buzz that it did. Because let's not forget, when Disney Plus launched with you know the first season of The Mandalorian, there are people who've heard of Baby Yoda, like, in a country that I uh, am living in, the UE. And Disney Plus wasn't available then. So why else do you think that we've heard about it? Okay, forget the marketing, you know, the trailers. Why did Disney Plus subscriptions spike up? Because people pirated it. And it made sure that, you know, all eyes were on their product. Let's say a million users pirated one Marvel movie. They'll watch it, and chances are that 100,000 of those million users will feel inclined to buy more Marvel movies. Boom. 100,000 customers were exposed to the product and want to buy your 4K editions because the product became more famous. And the reality is, and I know it should go without saying now because I've made it very clear, but pirating shouldn't be a red flag or frowned upon. Yes, there are times that it's an inconvenience. And yes, there are rare instances where it's dishonest to an indie filmmaker. But to a major studio, pirating content is just going to feel like an ant bite to them. Anyway, I would be very interested in your thoughts and opinions about pirating. Can it be beneficial to anyone? Can it not be beneficial to the cinema industry as a whole? I mean, I don't know. Like, are you sure about pirating in general? Or maybe you're just spectating this debate let me know in the comment section below or our twitter inbox at cinema quarter